Hi, I'm Phyllis Lang, and welcome to Nightwear. This video gives a general overview of the features in Deep Sky Planner 5 that help you with deep sky observing. First, we'll use the darkness report to find a time that is astronomically dark for observing. Next, we'll use the deep sky document to find objects to observe and the best time to observe them. We'll choose an object from the report and use the Show Chart feature to preview the object in a planetarium program. Finally, we'll slew the telescope to the object and enter an observation in the log. Several things have been set up before this video demonstration. Things like the geographical location, the equipment set up, the star charting setup and the telescope driver setup have all been configured. So let's get started. Generally, before we determine when we can observe, we need to know when it will be astronomically dark. In order to do this in Deep Sky Planner, you open a darkness document. I'll choose the graphical depiction style rather than the text style for this demonstration. We'll target a date in August, and we've already configured our location, the month of August, and here is a graphical depiction of darkness during August. We can scroll down through the list and see that about August the 12th will be a really good time as far as darkness goes. In order to interpret the darkness document, you can see that this bar depicts sun and moon positions. The light blue tells us the sun is above the horizon, and the yellow line tells us the moon is above the horizon. The light gray area tells us that the sun has set, but it has not yet reached 18 degrees below the horizon, which is when astronomical twilight ends. The darker gray indicates that astronomical twilight has ended. The bar above this is sort of a logical sum of the bar below. The white bar indicates that there is either sun or moon interfering with observing. The black bar tells us that it is astronomically dark. Next, we'll open a deep sky document and select the Messier catalog. I'm interested in finding a globular cluster that's well placed for observing on the evening of August 12th. So we'll use the speed button to open a deep sky document with the Messier catalog pre-selected. We know that we are only interested in objects that are globular clusters, so we'll select that. Next, we need to set the ephemeris date. By default, the ephemeris date is today, and I want it to be August 12th. The time that is listed here is appropriate for the altitude and azimuth listed in the report. So let's start that at 10 p.m., and we can refresh it anytime we want by clicking Now. Finally, our viewing time will be during astronomical darkness on August 12th, which is between these times. So we've set our searching parameters and we produce a report. The report, of course, for this video is squeezed into the bottom of the frame, so I'll stretch the frame so that we can see more of it. M3 looks like a good choice for observing on August the 12th, and it looks like the altitude at 10 p.m. will be 33 degrees. There's a good bit more information out to the right side of this report, so I'll scroll it into view. The columns in this report may include data that you do not need. You can rearrange the columns in a report, and you can turn off columns that do not interest you. To do that, you can click the Customize button and you can come to this list and click check boxes to turn on and off separate columns. You can also drag and drop columns if you want to reorder 
the report. Of course, these settings can be saved for use the next time you open this type of document. I'll scroll the report back to the left and we'll have a careful look at M3. First thing I'd like to do is have a look at its altitude as M3 travels through the sky during the date 12 August 2010. As you can see, at 10 p.m. it is setting, and in fact, about 34 degrees. We need to go ahead and look at this because it will be set before too long. If you want to have another view of when to observe M3, you can look at the altitude graph for the period of a year. And in this view, you select a time of evening and look at the altitude of the object over the course of a year. So as you can see, if you're a late evening observer, mid-May is an excellent time to look at M3 as it reaches a very high altitude from this location of 81 degrees.